we are in a, a battle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces and powers around us and around our loved ones. Jesus, you are all I ever need. So Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief who is the enemy, Satan, he comes only to steal, to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have life in all its fullness. And today I want to talk about a very, very difficult subject and something that is, is dear to my heart um, in a painful way. But it's, I want to talk about the situation of um, suicide. And many of us have been touched by suicide in our lives um, with loved ones. I worked for many years in, in uh, the criminal justice system, um, with social care, and many, many people uh, I, I experienced, um, people I worked with, and even friends of mine um, ended their own lives. And many, many others um, were victims of self-harm. And it really is a big subject. And I just want to say, first of all, that I do speak from a position of personal experience on this matter, because I struggled for perhaps half my life, 30 years of my life, I struggled with depression and uh, heaviness and um, a real heaviness upon me. And I, I encountered, I had three close calls with suicide myself. Um, and I can say that I, have all, I, have, I have found the answer to this problem, and his name is Jesus. And I'm into my third decade now of being completely free from depression, from despair, from gloominess, from any thoughts of, of, of harming myself or ending my life. Praise so God. I know, I speak from a position of, um, of authority in that sense, you know. You may disagree with me, but I feel I'm entitled to my opinion. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's, I, I just want to testify about the Lord Jesus Christ, how good he is. He is so honest. He is true. He is, you know, this is the thing that God showed me, that, you see, if God just loves us, it was no use to me. I wasn't interested. I needed something more than that. So God showed me that he loved me and he had the power and the desire to intervene in my life in a real and practical way. And I believe that is the case for each one of us, for every person in this world, that is God's intention and God's purpose. And God has that ability if we only open ourselves up to him and work with him. Hallelujah. So I know this is a difficult subject. And what I want to do today is I just want to, it's also a big subject, so <laughs> we could talk for three or four, five sessions on this, but I just want to convey something today because with a life ending in such an unfortunate way, it always leaves a wreckage behind it and many um, unanswered questions. And, um, you know, it's so painful and it's so heartbreaking. And I just want to bring to you today some of the lessons that I've learned and that I feel the Lord has shown me on this difficult subject that I, I believe gives real hope to me and I hope I, 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 I intend that to be the case for yourself as well. Um, let's just look at a couple of scriptures about our great God because God, Jesus said that he is the way, the truth and the life. And that no one comes to the Father except through him. And Jesus showed me that he is the way. Jesus is the way. He always finds a way. His name is the path. His name is the one who finds a way through. Mm. And I remember an old prophecy where they said that um, somebody in the, in the congregation um, felt they couldn't go on. And this prophecy was about a road, a bridge, and there was a huge boulder, massive boulder on the bridge, and there was no way through. You couldn't go over it or around it, and the person walked towards it and gave up. And the prophecy was, don't give up, 
go forward because Jesus is the way. And as they went forward, they found, as they became very close to the boulder, that there was a door and they were able to go through the door and find a way through this huge obstacle. And that is the lesson I, le I learned in life, that Jesus is the way, he is the truth. Everything associated with suicide, suicidal thoughts and self-harming thoughts is a lie from the enemy and has no credibility whatsoever. And Jesus is the truth and he loves us and he has a way forward and Jesus is life. And so Joel 2.32, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be delivered. I personally testify that is true. I was somebody that was in great need at a time in my life many years ago. I called upon the name of the Lord and he delivered me. He delivered me from all my fears and he brought me to a place of, um, of triumph, a place of victory, a place of success. You know, um, life is not always easy, but no one can take my hope away and no one can take my joy away. and No one can take my Jesus away from me. And um, so God's heart, God's salvation, God's um, heart for you in this world. Isaiah 61. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I just want to look at some of the words here because this was the mission of Jesus as he came into the world and the mission of Jesus today in our lives and the lives of our loved ones and those around us. That he is a message to the poor, to those who are downcast, to heal the brokenhearted. It's just so wonderful, you know, to proclaim liberty to the captives. And nothing holds us captive as much as uh, depression or despair. The opening of the prison to those who are bound. And I know that this is true. In the name of Jesus, we have authority and we have power. And we need to come aggressively against all negative thinking and all negativity in our lives and the lives of those around us. The opening of the prison to those who are bound. The prison opens with the authority of Jesus that we use now in his name. So when we speak in the name of Jesus, it is the same as Jesus speaking because we use his name. Hallelujah. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I had to discover and learn in my life that I was dealing with a demon, a dark, evil force. And it's here, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So heaviness is a spirit. Destruction is a spirit. And as we read in John 10, the thief comes, his mission is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So we're dealing with a spiritual battle. Whenever you feel discouraged, downcast, defeated, there is no way forward, there is no hope, you're dealing with a demon, you're dealing with a spiritual opposition, and then you need to force yourself to wake up and take authority over that in the name of Jesus and come against it and cast it down and command it to leave you and to get off you. Sometimes you have to do it two or three times and then you gain the authority and it, and it starts to leave you. And then you praise God. And it's, it's, it's great because we have a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. But I want to come back to that later because one of the tricks of the enemy is to develop a weakness in our mind and a passivity that we become passive. Um, and therefore, we become vulnerable to that which the enemy wants to do in our lives. But we have authority over Satan himself in the name of Jesus. We have authority over all negativity, <coughs> darkness, depression, all spiritual powers. We have authority in the name of Jesus. 
which is so comforting and so wonderful. The mission of Jesus, what was so what was on Jesus' heart when he, he ministered amongst us in this world and ministers today in this world? This is one of my favorite passages, Matthew 4, verse 12. Well, start, I'll read from verse 15. Whenever I used to read this for years, I always used to cry. And uh, I've got over that now. <laughs> so, um, but this is what Jesus did. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. And it's just so wonderful because if you've ever been in a very, very, very dark place, it's a place of defeat and you sit you, you, you can't fight, you can't stand, you just sit in the darkness and then you sit in the shadow of death. And it's, and it's amazing because Jesus is the light who comes into our lives and he's so wonderful and he dispels the darkness and he will take you by the hand and rise you to your feet and walk you out of that dark place, which I personally can testify about. And it is so wonderful. Today, as a minister, I have the privilege of ministering to those who are downcast, to people sometimes who are suicidal. Sometimes they've even said their goodbyes to people in their lives and they are at the point of, of death. And I've had the, the, the privilege and the honor to talk to them and to lead them out of that place and to, and to dispel the lies of the enemy that he's cast over them. And it is a spell, it's an enchantment. That there is no hope is a lie. And, you know, there is always life and hope with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is the light. So, suicidals were put into, suicidal thoughts were always being put into my head by uh, demonic forces, by demons. My battle was against them. And it's something that, the world will tell you that is not the case. And really, that doesn't help you. I mean, at best, they'll give you medication, um, some forms of counselling. None of those things actually helped me, particularly. Um, it was only really the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I had a, I had a struggle many years ago um, because of various lifestyles when I was younger. Um, I actually had some struggles with some demons in my own life. And these were real things, a spirit of heaviness, various different types of demons that had gained a foothold in my life. And, you know, without realizing it, I had invited them into my life because of my lifestyle and the choices I made in life. And maybe I inherited some, I'm not sure. I'm not really sure exactly where they all came from, but I, they, they certainly were a problem. And the day came when the Lord gloriously delivered me from all of those um, spirits in my life, which was, which was very wonderful. You know, demons, once they're identified and they're confronted in the name of Jesus, they leave. It's as simple as that. It really is a very simple procedure. They are terrified of being exposed. They are terrified of the light. And my goodness, they are so afraid of a Christian who gets hold of their identity and begins to wield the authority of the name of Jesus against them. They have to flee. But there was a time in my life when I, I had a particular struggle with, these, um, with, with some demons in my life. And I'm not ashamed of saying that today. It was a long time ago and you know I am delivered today. Um, and I feel you know I can relate to Mary Magdalene who had a, the title of Mary Magdalene of whom seven demons were cast out. So I'm, you know, I could be called Pastor Alan Freeman, of whom seven demons were cast out. <laughs> I don't know. No one calls me that anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, it's just to the glory of God that they were there, they were identified and they were gone. I didn't know they were there until really near the end. But what is it like to have a demon inside you? What do demons do? I just want to read a passage from Mark chapter 9 starting at verse 17. 
I'm going to read it quickly, and then I'm just going to go over and pick out a number of key words. One, in the men, one of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, Teacher, I brought my son so you could heal him. He is possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk. And whenever this spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground. Then he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't do it. Jesus said to them, you faithless people, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought the boy, and when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion, and he fell to the ground, writhing and foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy's father. He replied, since he was a little boy, the spirit often throws him into the fire or into water, trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. Now, it's an interesting passage, and we've read that many times, and we've looked at, at, at different um, points in that particular passage. But I just want to pick out some key words here about what it was like for that person, for that boy, to have a demon inhabiting him. So the deep, this, in verse um, 17, the spirit won't let him talk. Verse 18, this spirit seizes him and throws him violently to the ground, foaming at the mouth, grinding his teeth, becoming rigid. So carrying on to verse 20. It threw the child into a violent convulsion and he fell to the ground, writhing and foaming at the mouth. And then verse 22, the spirit often throws him into the fire or water, trying to kill him. So it's very interesting. And we see the nature again of the demon that it comes to steal. It was stealing the boy's life. It was stealing the father's relationship with the boy. It was trying to kill. It was trying to kill the boy. And it was trying to destroy. And, and demons, this is the nature of demons. Jesus never met a demon he liked. He always came against them aggressively and cast them down. No demon could stand against Jesus. Just like no demon can stand against you if you have the spirit of God in you and you wield the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But the nature of this demon was trying to kill this child. And this is the point I'm trying to, I wanted to just raise today in this big subject. And it's a very emotive subject, suicide. It's a big subject, but I wanna just bring some encouragement that I found in my own life through long years of uh, searching and prayer, that many suicides are not actually suicides. They are demonic killings. And I think this brings tremendous hope to us mm. because when somebody dies, especially a loved one, a child, a partner, um, a parent, somebody close to us, it is so awful. And we just ask so many questions afterwards and it leaves it really, it, we just are cast into a, a terrible grief. But, you know, I just want to say that if you have a, if a person has a demon in them and they do not stand up to that demon and control it, if that demon grows in influence in their life and they become passive towards that spirit, that spirit will try to, to harm them, steal their life, to destroy their life and ultimately to kill them. And this, this was a great comfort to me when I realized that many, many suicides are actually demonic killings. And I first came across this concept with um, a couple that I used to um, refer to in my ministry. They, they were a couple that I looked up to a great deal and, and me and my wife, we would, we would contact them to ask advice and counsel at times. And they're old, you know, he's very old now, and she is uh, home with the Lord. But she had an experience where a friend of hers, um, he had a son who was a Marine, and they had a broken relationship. But later on in life, they, 
he made contact and they formed a relationship again and it was going really well and this man was a devout christian but his son wasn't and um he spent some time with him when the marine was on leave they spent time together and it was going really really well and the father was spending a lot of time explaining the gospel and talking about jesus and this his son was really interested and they were making great progress and um one afternoon they went out on the back of the house to a shooting range and they shot their as they do they they shot their guns at targets and had a good time and then they came back in and they were cleaning their weapons and the father went out of the room for a minute and he came back in and the son had a gun pointed his own pistol at his head and was having a tremendous physical struggle he was pouring the sweat and he was having a tremendous struggle and he and, and unfortunately he ended up shooting himself and dying and the father was absolutely completely heartbroken he couldn't just understand why his son had committed suicide and together with this couple that i mentioned a minute ago they they were seeking the lord and the lord showed them that it was actually a demonic killing that this boy had a, this young marine had a demon in him and the demon at some at that point suddenly um exerted its influence and physically attempted to take control of him and ended his life for him which was a demonic killing and it did bring tremendous comfort to this man especially with the fact that um they he believed that the lord honored the intentions of the boy's heart that he was seeking after the lord and that you know he and he believed that he was safe with the lord because the lord honored the intentions of his heart and it really made me think a great deal about this but i remember many years ago many many years ago when i had some uh, demons in me that there were two occasions perhaps three occasions where i also experienced a similar struggle a physical struggle where on one occasion there was a voice that wanted to speak out of me which was different to my own voice and it was saying words i i, I didn't have any intention of saying and i managed to control it but it was with a tremendous struggle and another occasion when i was driving very fast on a motorway and um i kept being tempted to swerve off the road and to crash into a bridge and i had to physically take I had to exert a great deal of willpower to stop my hands from swerving the car into crash and there was a third occasion as well so i believe this is the case for many of those around us who um have demonic problems in their life one of the things that demons do in a person is that they they lead them they weaken the person's willpower they lead, lead, weaken the person's will and they um lead the person to become passive in a certain way they may look they may be able to be strong-willed and active in many aspects of their life but there's a part of them that is very passive and you ask someone um who has a demon to read the scriptures it's a real struggle for them to do so but i just wanted to identify a few things that i've come across um that i believe weaken a person's will and that demons will always lead people into and one of the first things is is smoking cannabis the use of cannabis and narcotics and drunkenness but cannabis in particular secular music repetitive secular music yoga eastern meditation anything that re revolves the emptying of someone's mind and these um false religions <laughs> and there's other things as well that um we have to really be careful about and demons are masters at you know plotting and planning and strategically looking to destroy a person so we need to be very active and careful we need to be people of the word of god i'm talking even of christians here we need to be people of the word we need to be in the bible we need to be inclining our ears we've been looking a lot at proverbs 4 verses 20 to 22 that is a that is an antidote to negativity and um all negativity all negativity in our lives 
So <clears throat> the last point I want to make before I just open it up for <laughs> any questions or any opinions, um, that we have a responsibility around us to take charge of the spiritual dynamic that is going on. And we need to be a people who declare God's word and the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ, not only over ourselves, but over our families, our family members, over, over people that we encounter in this world, always ready with the word of the God of light, of salvation. But we need to be prayerful over our, over our children, over our partners, over our parents, over our church members, our neighbours, our work colleagues, to guard and to protect and to watch out for those who are succumbing to negativity. And we need to speak life over them. And I think something for me that because of my life, I, I, if anyone around me is, is becoming very down and depressed or I encounter anyone, I always tell them that they must always contact me if ever they are coming to a point where they feel the lies of the enemy, that the world will be a better place if they're not in it, or they have a moral responsibility to, to end their life, or any of these foolish lies, you know, to contact me day or night, anytime, and um, so that I will be able to pray for them, to speak life over them. I think praying for our families and loved ones is so crucial, it's so important, and also declaring life over them. So. As I said, really, it's a really, really big subject. And the point I just want to make today, and I hope it's an encouragement to you if you've encountered suicide, is that often it's not actually, it wasn't actually the person's desire to do that, to end their life. It was a, it was a demonic killing. So read your Bible. We've been given the gift of tongues. Every Christian can use the gift of tongues. We need to use it. We need to build ourselves up. Speaking in tongues is a direct antidote to all that the enemy does to make us passive to, to demons. We need to grow and build ourselves up and become spiritually strong and strong in our minds. Um, people of the word of God, we need to fight back. So James 4, 7 to end on. Humble yourselves before God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Which is my personal testimony. I, I testify that I am entirely free today from all negativity and depression and despair and gloominess and um, all of those awful thoughts. And uh, the credit to that is entirely at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, you are all I ever need. You're my Savior, Jesus, you are my...